Okay, welcome back. Uh, this lesson is called Application of Linear Functions, and this is video number 11. Now, I told you in the last video that I would put up the homework problem that is due uh, Tuesday when you get back on the board. So this is number 109. I will move out of the way, okay, so that you can view this problem. You may pause the video and you may write this down, okay? And when you are done writing this down, you may uh, start the video back up and let's go ahead and get going. So this is the homework problem that you must have completed by Tuesday, okay? And oh no, word problems. Okay, so why are we learning what we're learning? Okay, I love this lesson. Okay, what does a linear function allow us to do? To sum it up, linear function allows us to predict what's going to happen in the future. Okay, so, okay, it comes down to here. Linear functions allow us to make money. For instance, if you knew, okay, the winning lottery numbers for tomorrow, you would be what? You'd be rich. Okay, so don't get too excited. Okay, linear function does not allow us to find the winning lottery numbers for tomorrow, but it does allow us to do things like this. Okay, for instance, a company wants to invest money in a certain stock. Okay, so if you can use a linear function to predict what might happen tomorrow on that stock and the company invests say $100,000 and they make $50,000 on their investment, 50%, you know, which is astronomical. Uh, you are the person that made the prediction. You become valuable to that company. Why? If the company makes $50,000, do you think they're willing to give you a cut of, say, $10,000? Well, absolutely. Okay, because linear, people that know how to do math, people that know uh, how to make predictions with linear functions or any of the 10 parent functions that I put on the board become valuable to companies that want to predict what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, so that's one application. There are many applications to math. Math allows us to create video games, okay? Video games that, that entertain, okay? Math allows us to advance in medical technology to save lives. There's many, many, many applications to math, but we don't just learn this stuff just to learn it. But if you go on and you finish high school, you go into college and you study math and science. These things allow you to become an asset to companies that want to make money, either uh, making predictions for investments, but also creating machines that save lives is also valuable to companies that can sell those machines. So it's, 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 it's very, very interesting to look at what we're learning and how this is a very simple model Okay, very simple example of how we can use linear functions to predict the future. For instance, here, let me give you another example. If you want to know what size shoe Shaquille O'Neal wears, uh, can we use a linear function to predict or find out what that shoe size is without knowing it? Absolutely. Okay, there's many things uh, that we can find correlation. The correlation is the key word here. Two things that relate. Okay, when we look at Shaquille O'Neal's shoe size, we're going to use data from class to predict what that shoe size is. Why? Because we can find a correlation between two things, namely height and shoe size. Okay, we're going to talk about that as well. But, okay, so this is problem number 109. Make sure you have this copied down. Okay, pause the video. Make sure it's copied down. I'm going to race, and we're going to enter into this problem number 106, which is the example we're going to look at, the example that I solved in class. Okay, so let's erase 109. I don't even know if I'm going to have enough space. This, this lesson takes quite a bit of space. But don't get worried, okay? You look at this word file, oh no, very hard. Actually, it's pretty simple, okay? So I'm going to show you how this works. But before, okay, how do we make this simple? You know, you see all these words, you know, what is, how do we see linear function in these words? Well, it comes down to, again, two things you need to find. What are they? Well, you need a point, and you need what? A slope, okay? So we're going to find these two pieces of information, point and slope. Now, before we start on this, let's get some definitions down. So get your definition sheet out, and we're going to write, uh, okay, start with the first definition. Well, let's just write definitions. Okay, I just don't have a lot of space here. Definitions. Y is called the dependent variable. Okay, now Y is the dependent variable. What do you think x is called? Okay, hopefully you said, well, probably independent. Yes, independent variable. And the key phrase we're going to use 
Okay, the key phrase we're going to use is that Y, and I don't know if, I think the camera can see this, Y depends on X. Let me just take one quick moment here. I'm going to do that. Quick moment, check the camera, make sure that they can pick that up. Okay, yes, it does, definitely. Okay, so Y depends on X. This is our phrase. This is our key phrase. It's going to allow us to find a point and a slope to be able to work this problem, okay? And actually, let me write this a little smaller. We're gonna need space. So point and slope, okay? All right, so Y depends on X. Y depends on X. Before we go any further, I'm just gonna write this, put it on the definition sheet, and then I'm gonna erase it. Okay, so we're looking at positive correlation. Let's spell that right. Positive correlation as, this is another definition, as x increases, I guess, I don't know if this is really a definition, but we're going to call it a definition. As x increases, y increases. You can think of positive correlation as positive slope, okay? As one goes up, the other goes up, okay? As x increases, y increases. We also have negative correlation. As x increases, y hmm, probably what decreases. Yes. Okay. Now, positive correlation, positive slope. Negative correlation, negative slope. That's one way to think of it. Okay. So I'm going to erase this because so we just need the space. Okay. Let's look at the problem and see. All right. We we'll read this problem. So we have to first know what the problem is. Even you know, at least some of the information in this problem. Try to. Let's read it first. In 1999, there were 4,076 JCPenney stores, and in 2003, there were 1,078 stores. It says, write a linear equation that gives the number of stores in terms of the year T, and let T equal 9 represent 1999, then predict the number of stores for the years 2008, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's go back to the top for a minute, and let's just read this. In 1999, there were 4,076 stores, and in 2003, there were only 1,078 stores. So if you had to think for a moment, what's happening to the stores? Okay, hopefully you say, well, there were more stores in 1999 than there were in 2003. So we see that the stores are going down. Okay, the number of stores are going down. That would be an example of negative correlation. Okay, negative correlation, meaning that the, as X increases, Y increases, well, maybe you don't understand that yet, but what's basically happening? The stores are going down. This is negative slope. Okay, trend is downwards. Okay, we had 4,076 stores, but as time is go increasing, as time is increasing, the numbers of stores are going down. Okay, so this would be negative correlation, negative slope. Don't have to understand that yet. Just kind of the concept of what's going on. Stores are going down. So we do see a trend here. Now, before we get into this, what to do, let's talk about this Y depends on X. Okay, so there's many things that correlate. Okay, so we have to think there's, okay, let's come up with some situations uh, of correlation. Two things that are related. Maybe think, um, I use these two examples in class. Maybe some of you out there are fishermen. So if I had to ask, uh, does the weather, okay, the weather conditions affect how the fish bite, okay? Uh, here's another one. Here's another one. Um, do road conditions maybe correlate with the number of accidents that might occur in a day? Well, absolutely. I think we can find some correlation here between road conditions and the number of accidents that occur in a day. We could possibly find correlation between weather conditions and how the fish may bite. Okay, so we have to read this phrase. Y depends on X. If you can do read this phrase, the problem becomes very simple. Okay. Now, uh, we'll get there in a minute. Let's draw it. To do this problem, number 106, what do you need? You need a graph. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw Let's go ahead and draw a graph. Okay, so here is our graph. All right, you need a graph to be able to set this problem up. To be able to find a point to slope, you need a graph, and you need this phrase, y depends on x. Okay, so draw just a blank graph. All right, now let's look at dependency again. Weather conditions, how the fish bite. Road conditions, how many accidents might occur in a day. So let's listen to the dependency. There is dependency here, and if you can hear it, see if you can find this. Okay, so question, does... The weather conditions depend on how many fish bite 
Or does the number of fish that bite depend on what the weather conditions are? Okay, hopefully you can hear this. Okay, it's very clear that the number of fish that bite would depend on weather conditions. Okay, so the dependency goes, number of fish depend on weather condition. Okay, y depends on x. Let's go to the other, I think this one's more clear. Okay, so road conditions, number of accidents that occur in a day. So, do the road conditions, does the number of road, con, or does the road conditions depend on the number of accidents that occur in a day? Or, would it make more sense to say, the number of accidents that occur in a day depend on what the road conditions are? Okay. Hopefully you can hear that dependency, that the number, the number of accidents that occur in a day would depend on what the road conditions are. Okay, so there's dependency here. Going here, we have two things in this problem. Notice, we have the number of stores. In 1999, there were so many stores, 4,076. And in 2003, there were so many stores. We have numbers of stores. We also have year. Okay, so two things in this problem. We're going to try to find dependency between the numbers of stores and the year, numbers of stores in the year. So let's do this. Okay, here's year, and here's numbers of stores. So question, does the year it, that it is depend on the number of stores in existence? Or would it make more sense to say the numbers of stores that are in existence depends on what year it is? Okay, so hopefully you can hear this dependency. It, it doesn't really, it comes down to, it really doesn't matter which way you set it up. Okay, it really doesn't matter. But one makes more sense than the other. Hopefully you can hear that the numbers of stores would depend on the year. Okay, in 1999 there were this many stores. In 2003 there were only this many stores. The numbers of stores depend on what year it is. Okay, so there it is. There it is. Numbers of stores. So Y depends on X. Y depends on X. Numbers of stores. Let's write this. Numbers of stores depend on what year it is. Okay, so let's write year here. Okay, so numbers of stores depend on the year. You can hear the dependency. Y depends on X. There it is. There it is. So on our graph, we're going to write X is what? X is year. This is our X axis, so we're going to write year. Okay? And this is our Y axis, so we're going to write numbers, numbers of stores. Okay, so what do we have here? We have that the X axis is the year, and the numbers of stores would be the Y axis. Now, I'll say this. Notice, uh, well, before we do this, what do we need? We need variable, variable, variable for year, variable for year. Okay, year is our unit. We need a variable. Okay, you can call this x, okay, but we generally don't like to use x and y here. For year, okay, year is time. Generally, the convention is to use t for time, okay? And for numbers of stores, you pick. Numbers of stores, what variable do you want to use? You could use y, but I think s, s, makes more sense, because if we're looking at S, we would know what we were talking about. So S for stores, T for year. Okay, so if it were year, you use T. If it were hour, you use T. If it's minutes, you use T. Uh, if it's seconds, you use T. T is a variable that represents the measurement of time. So years is a measurement of time. We're going to use variable T. That's just convention. Now, what I was saying Okay, 90, 999 out of 1,000 times, if you struggle with this phrase, y depends on x, okay, if you struggle with the dependency, 999 out of 1,000 times, time is our x-axis, okay, time is the x-axis or the independent variable. All right, now, so if I said, uh, if I said miles per hour, miles per hour, you have miles and you have hours. Which one do you think is going to be your x? Yes. Okay. Time. Okay. Time. Hours would be your x. Okay. So 999 out of 1,000 times, you can assume that your time will be your x-axis. So that's a big clue. Your homework problems, you're going to have time. So you can set up time as your x-axis. Now, uh, okay, to go further. What this allows us to do when we have the set up year and numbers of stores, we have variable t, we have variable s is we can now write a uni uh, an ordered pair in terms of our variables. Notice that ordered pairs are what? X comma Y, but we are not using X and Y, we are using in terms of what? T is our X, so we're gonna put T comma S. Now, let me give you the steps for your homework. Your first step for your homework is to graph. Okay, now I'm actually gonna delay graphing it, but you have, you have to graph it Okay, step two is to set up a t-table. Let's go ahead and write step two is t-table. 
I mean by t table? Well, t table is another way of writing ordered pairs. So we have t and s. T tables are written in terms of x and y. Okay, so instead of x and y, notice what are we using here? We're using what? t and s. So we're going to put t and we're going to put s. Okay, so notice we have t is our x, s is our y. Okay, now we read the problem. Going back to this, guys, what two things do you need to grab a line? You need what? A point and a slope. This is in the problem. Okay, so let's read the problem and see what it gives us. Notice, it says in 1999, there were 4,076 JCPenney stores, and in 2003, there were what? 1,078 stores. So do you see time, the year, and do you see S, the number of stores? Yes. So we're going to write, what is our time? Time is what? 1999, and the number of stores are what? 4,076. What do you see here? What do you see here? You see what? You see an ordered pair. Notice, TS. What do we have here? Here. What do we have here? We have 1999, there were 4,076 4, stores. Do you see that the problem is giving you a point? Hopefully you say yes. This problem is giving you points, okay? And with points, we can find a slope, okay? So in 1999, there were 4,076 stores. And in 2003, there were, what, 1,078 stores. So I'm going to write that here, 1,078. Now, there's something else in the problem we have to read. Notice, it says down here, it says, let t equal 9 represent 1999. Okay, let t equals 9 represent 1999. There's a way to, okay, we don't like to work with big numbers. Okay, we like to work with small numbers. We can change 1999 to 9 as long as we are consistently changing all of the years in a certain pattern. Okay, so we're going to start with 1999 as 9. Here, let me help you out. We're going to take 1999 and change it to 9. Okay, so my question is, what is 1998? Okay, 1998, if 1999 is 9, then 1998 is 8. And what is 1997? That is what? That is 7. Okay, question, what is 2000? Some students in class said zero. No, 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 think. 1977, 1998, 1999 is nine. So 2000 would be what? 2000 would be 10. What is 2000? What is 2003? Well, 2003 would be what? 13. Now, let's go down. Okay, so 1997 is seven. My question is, what is 1990? Hmm. Well, if 1999 is nine and 1998 is eight, 1990 would be what? 1999 would be zero. Question, what is 1989 in this mapping? Okay, this is, we're changing these, it's called a mapping. Okay, so 1989 would be what? Negative one, okay? So just, just getting you familiar with changing. So if we change 1999 to nine, and we change 1999, 1998 to eight, we have to be consistent in our mapping all the way through, no matter what year we use. Okay, so looking here, we're not gonna write 1999, we're going to write just what? Just 9, okay? And not 2003, but we're going to just write what? 13, okay? So let's change this. So we have 13 for 2003, and we have 9 for 1999. Okay, so question. We need to find point and slope. Do we have, do we have some of this information already? Well, hopefully you say yes. We have what? We have two points. We have the point. I'll write them like this. We have the point 9, 4,076. We also have the point, we also have the point what? 13, 1,078. You guys are used to looking at them like this, written. You guys are used to looking at them written left to right. Okay, here they're written vertically. Okay, so you have the 0.9, 4,076, 13, 1,000. Okay, so do we have one of these pieces of information, namely our point and our slope? Yes, we have points. We have too many points. Okay, I always tell students, pick the point with the smaller values. So which one has the smaller values? So I don't know. Well, 1,000 is smaller than 4,000, but 13 is bigger than 9. When I say pick the point with smaller values, look at the big values, the big ones, guys. Okay, so which number is considerably smaller? Well, hopefully you can see 1,078 is a lot smaller than 4,076. So it's generally easier to use points that have smaller values. Since 1,078 is significantly lower, let's use this point, 13, 1,078. It does not matter, okay, which one you use. Your predictions of what's going to happen in the future will still be the same, but this generally leads to easier problems. Okay, so 13, 1,078. Now what do we need? We need what? A slope. 
Now, you recall definition of slope. Slope is what? M equals, hmm, what's that definition? It's on the definition sheet, guys. Slope is what? Delta Y over delta X. But hold on now. We're not using, in this problem, we are not using X and Y. What are we using? We're using T and S. So we need to change this. Not delta Y, but what is our Y variable? Y variable is S. So we're going to call slope here what? Delta S over delta T. And let's write, what does this mean? Delta, remember, delta means change in position or subtract. We're going to say that this means the change in stores, running out of space, divided by the change in time. So the change in stores divided by the change in time. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have a point, we need a slope, let's set it up. Okay, so we know that slope, we're going to work it down here, slope is equal to delta S over delta T. Okay, or the change in stores divided by the change in time. Now, literally, delta means to subtract, remember? Triangle, delta means subtract, so what are we going to do here? We're going to subtract the numbers of stores. And here we will subtract the time. Okay, so numbers of stores. Numbers of stores are what? 4,076 and 1,078. So we're going to take the stores and subtract, starting with 4,076. We have 4,076, subtract what? 1,078, divide by, now subtract your time. Now be careful. You're not used to looking at this vertically, you're used to looking at this horizontally. Now, where did we start? We started with what? We started with 4,076. We did 4,076 subtract what? 1,078. Remember, whatever point you start in for your y, you must also start in the same point for your x. So now we're going to start with what x value? We're going to start with what? 9. Okay, so 4,076 subtract 1,078. And then on the x, we're going to do 9 minus 13, or I should say t. Okay, so 9, not x, but t. 9 minus 13. Now, here, hopefully you can see this vertically. Notice we did 4,076 subtract 1,078. Vertically, we started with the top. And vertically, same thing for our T, we started with 9, subtract 13. Okay, so we get this. Now, I tell you guys, uh, I encourage you to do everything by hand. But in this case, if you would like to use a calculator, that's fine. Okay, 4,076 subtract 1,078 is negative 2,998. And, oh, I'm sorry positive 2,998, and 9 minus 13 is negative 4. Okay, so this is what we end up with. All right, now let's use, if you need to, you can also use a calculator here. 2,998 divided by negative 4 gives negative 749.5. Okay, so what you have just done is you have calculated your slope. Okay, so we have to figure out what this means. What does negative 749.5 mean? Write it like this. Now, I always told you, don't write over 1 in this class, but for this example, let's go ahead and do it just to make sense of this. Go ahead and write negative 749.5 over 1. Now, you agree that what's on top, what does delta S mean? Delta S means the change in the number of stores, and delta T means the change in the number of years. Let me clarify again. Year is our unit. T is our variable. Stores are the unit, S is the variable. So my question is, what are our units for top and bottom? These are the units. So we're looking at delta S over delta T is what? Stores over year. So we have, notice, negative 749.5, and I'm out of space. Let me write it here. Negative 749.5 over 1 means, you can extend this, 749.5 stores every one year. Okay, so stores on top, year on the bottom. Okay, so how do we read this? What does negative mean? Does negative mean up or down? Hopefully you say down. This means that we're going down on average by 749.5 stores every one year. Okay, so it's a slope. Okay, so this is here. This line, go ahead and draw an arrow. This line means per, okay? So our slope is read as 
down 749.5 stores per year. So let's look at the problem. Notice, in 1999, there were 4,076 stores. In 2003, there were 1,078 stores. What happened? Okay, so we subtracted. Notice, what was the difference between 4,076 and 1,078? Here it is. Let's take our negative, looking here. Looking here. Put our negative up top. When we subtracted, we found that it went down by 2,998 stores in four years. Okay, so what happened here? It went down by 2,998 stores in how many years? In four years. Okay, so we divided, and this is called, this is called our average. So what actually happened? What actually happened? What actually happened is it went, the stores went down by 2,998 stores in four years. What this means is on average, the stores decreased by 749.5 stores every one year. Okay, and what does this line mean? Per. So we read this as 749.5 stores down per year. Okay, now you guys have probably heard, well I know you've heard, miles per, here, MPH, miles per hour. What is this? Okay, what does per mean? Okay, per means divide. Miles per hour. Okay, per means divide. Okay, what is miles per hour? Miles per hour is what? Slope, okay? Slope. Anytime you hear kilometers per hour, this is what? Slope. Centimeters per second, this is slope. Okay, anytime you per, okay, divide, this is slope, miles per hour. Now notice, we said slope is what? Slope is delta Y over what? Delta X. So tell me, which one of these, miles or hours, is our Y? Okay, hopefully you say the top. Okay, miles is our Y and hours is what? Hours is our X. So from slope, you can actually figure out here, if you draw a little graph, you draw a little graph from slope itself, you can figure out what is your y. Well, your y is miles. And what is your x? Your x is hours. Okay, so remember what I said. 999 times out of 1,000, what is going to be your x-axis? Your x-axis will be your time. Notice, hours are a measurement of time. Remember that hours are our unit. Miles are our unit. Okay, so for hours, this is our unit. We need a variable. What are we going to use? T for time. And for miles, you could use M for miles, okay? Now, so that just kind of gives you a little bit of perspective. Your homework tonight, your problem will have years in it, and you can use year for your x-axis. All right, so I've shown you how to calculate slope. So what is our slope numerically? Numerically, our slope is negative 749.5. So let's go ahead and write that here. Uh, I'm going to erase this just for space, okay? So I'm going to erase this, and our slope is... M equals negative 749.5, and I want you to write your units. Your units are stores per year. So we're going to write this as stores per year. Okay, that's how we read it. Went down 749.5 stores per year. Now, erase this as well. Okay, let's go over the steps for your homework again. Step one is to graph. Notice I haven't even put anything on the graph yet. Step two is to draw a t-table or set up a t-table. Okay. Step three, step three is to I'm just going to write it. Find the slope. Okay. Notice we've already done that. Okay. So step three is to find the slope, and step four. Okay. So notice we've written our slope. Step four is to write the equation. Okay, so step four is write an equation. Okay. To model this situation. Okay, now an equation is using what? Point and slope. Okay, so our equation. What is the easiest equation in this class to write? Hopefully you say we have three forms. We have what? Point, slope, slope, intercept, and what else? We have standard. Okay, so if you had to pick between these three, what form do you think would be easiest? Hopefully you say point slope. I agree. Okay, so we're going to write y, then what? Opposite the y value. What is our y value of our point? 
y value is what? 1,078, so we're going to write y opposite the y value is minus 1,078 equals, now our slope, slope is negative 749.5 times quantity x, then opposite the x value. Since our x value is 13, we have x minus 13, and you have successfully written the equation that models this situation. Okay, now let's go back to graph. Let's go ahead and set up our graph really quick. Uh, I'm going to erase this, extend this out a little bit, okay, and I think this will be enough room to do what we need to do. Okay, so again, we have out here, we have year, okay, and year, well, we're going to need probably even more space than that. Okay, year, and our variable is T, and up here, we have stores, okay, and our variable is S, a number of stores. Now, Notice, we have to graph the point 9, 4,076, and the point 3, 1, 000, or 13, 1,078. Uh, I, would, I, I would recommend that you guys, well, are we dealing with a limited amount of space here? Okay, I'd recommend that you remap both your x and your y axis. You guys are used to looking at the origin, looking at the origin as the point 0, 0. Is it okay to change this location? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to change this location to, just bear with me here. We're going to change this location to, say, for instance, 5, 0. Okay, now let's go ahead and set up unit on the x-axis. Okay, I'm just counting 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. What have we done here? We have changed the x value, and this is allowed, x comma y. We have changed the x value to what? 5. Okay, and notice, have I put any units on the t-axis? No. Okay, so if there's no units written, then we assume that the units are 1. Notice that if the origin is at 5, what is this first unit? This first, or this first value would be 6, the next value would be 7, the next value would be 8. So I'm assuming, if no units are written, that your units are in terms of 1. Since you changed your origin to 5, 0, just make sure you label it if you change it. Okay, then I'm assuming that this is 6, this is 7, this is 8, and this is 9. Notice we have to graph point 0.9, 4,076. Now, to go 4,076, <laughs> that's not a lot of space, okay? So we have to go up 4,076 in this much space. All right, now we're going to have units here. Well, let's just put 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we only have, say you only have space for 4. How can you make 4,076 fit into 4 spaces? Okay, we're going to change our, grid, our, our scale, okay, to units of 1,000. So we're going to write 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000. Okay, it's not necessary to write all of these. I told you guys that you only have to write the first two. 1,000, 2,000 tells me that this is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Okay, now, so 4,076. Okay, so hopefully you can see change your scale to units of 1,000. Now, if you had more space... We want to use as much space of the graph as possible, so maybe units of 500, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, that would also be acceptable. On your test, I will give you 10 by 10 graphs, okay? So somehow you have to figure out how to change your scale to make your problems fit on a 10 by 10 graph, okay? So make sure that you guys are practicing changing your scale to, an, to a reasonable scale, something that will fit on a 10 by 10. So we have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. We have to graph the point 9, 4,076 is where? 6, 7, 8, 9. We're here. Okay. 4,076 is slightly above 4,000. And then we also have to graph the point 13, 1,078. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1,078 is here. Okay. Now, question. Do we connect these points, or do we not connect these points, all right? Think, okay, think. Uh, yesterday, and in the previous lessons, I said, how many points form a line, okay? How many points form a line? Well, infinitely many, okay? There are infinitely many points that form a line. But I also told you that two points determine the direction of a line. So these two points would determine the direction of a line, but my question is, do these two points form a line? 
Let's talk about what these two points mean. Okay, so what we do in math class is a little different than what we do out there. Okay, when we're solving these problems. And what do we do out there? Well, okay, uh, this is a measurement, and this is a measurement. Okay, so if I want to write measurement. Try and help you guys understand what we're looking at here. Measurement. Measurement of what? Well, it's a measurement that in 1999, there were 4,076 stores. And this also, this point represents another measurement. Okay? Okay, this measurement was that in the year 2013, there were 1,078 stores. My question is, is it possible, okay, to, to, to form a line, how many measurements would you have to have? Well, you would have to have infinitely, infinitely many measurements. But is it possible for us to measure forever? No. Okay, so uh, measurements are always going to be restricted in number. Okay, so to answer the question, no. These points do not form a line. But these two points determine the direction of a line. Okay, so what is the difference between the line and the measurements? Okay, so I'm going to say this. Until I tell you in this class, until I tell you uh, to, here, let me write it like this. Uh, graph a model. Graph a model. Okay, a model is a line. Okay. When I tell you to graph a model, what I'm saying is draw a line. And question, will the line necessarily pass through the points? No. Okay. The line may not even pass through these points. Now, in this case, our model that we graph, or the model, the line that we draw, will pass through these points. But shortly, you guys will see that the line that we graph doesn't even pass through the points. Okay, but in this case, if I say graph a model, okay, it will pass through these points because there are only two points. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys now, graph a model. Okay, graph a model of this situation. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and draw the line. I just want you guys to understand this line is not representing measurement. What does this line tell us? This line tells us the orientation or the direction or the slope or the trend. What is happening here? What is happening here? Notice, does this line have a positive or negative slope? It has a negative slope. What this means is that the trend is downward. That as time increases, this is your time, as we go to the right, as time increases, what is happening to the number of stores as we go to the right? The number of stores is what? Decreasing. Okay, so numbers of stores are going down. Remember, what does negative correlation mean? Negative correlation, we wrote it at the beginning, negative correlation means that as x increases, y decreases. Now, in this case, x is t and y is s. So notice, as t increases, S decreases. As we go to the right, or as time is increasing, what is happening to the number of stores? The number of stores are decreasing. So we think of it like this. Here, let me help you. Okay, as time increases, S decreases, or as X increases, Y decreases. If they are doing opposite things, okay, we could also say as time decreases, as time de well, I don't want to confuse. Okay, if they're doing opposite things, then this is negative correlation. Okay. If they're doing the same thing, if they're both going up or they're both going down, okay, as x increases, y increases, or as x decreases, y decreases, if they're doing the same thing, that would be an example of negative correlation. I'm sorry, of positive correlation. If they're doing the same thing, okay, both going up or both going down, this is positive correlation. Notice, they are doing opposite things. As time increases, numbers of stores decrease. This is an example of negative correlation. Now, back to the problem. We draw what? We graph a model. Okay, so does the line represent measurement? No, the line represents what we learned in math class. Okay, this allows us to make predictions of what's going to happen in the future. Okay, so what is going to happen in the future? Uh, now, question, what is this equation? What is this equation? This equation is the equation of this linear model. Okay, it represents this line. Okay, not the measurements itself. This equation is what's going to allow us to predict what is happening in the future. 
Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this up very quickly. Notice it says to predict what? Predict the numbers of stores for the years 2008 and 2010. Okay, so to, to make a prediction, we are going to use the model that we graphed. Okay, this line. To make a prediction. And what represents the model that we graphed or this line? This equation. Okay, so this equation represents the model. Now, notice it says predict for the years 2008 and the year 2010. Okay, so to predict for year 2008, let's start here. 2008. Question, what is 2008 represented by in our t-table? Okay, I might have to erase this to give us some space. We have 9, 4,076, 13, 1,078. Okay, question, 2008, we said that 9 is 1999. And we said that 2003 was 13. So my question is, what is 2008? Okay, hopefully you can see that 2008 is 18. Okay, so we're going to put 18. Notice what value is 18? What value is 18? 18 is a T value. So in the equation, <clears throat> I made a big mistake here, guys. Big mistake. Okay, the equation is not Y minus. It is not X minus. What is it? Oh, it is not Y, but it is what? S. It is not X, but it is what? It is T. Okay. Probably will not remake this video. Let's just go ahead and understand that I made a mistake. This should have been S. This should have been T. Now, in the equation, to use this to make our prediction, we are going to put in what? We are going to put in 18 for what value? For T. And what do we need to find? We need to find S. So we know T. We don't know S. Let's go ahead and put in 18 in for T. So in the equation, we have S minus 1,078 is equal to negative 749.5 times quantity. We're not writing T minus 13, but rather what's going in for T? 18 is going in for T, so we're going to have 18 minus 13. Okay, now, remember if we don't have X in parentheses, we go ahead and combine these two numbers. 18 minus 13 gives what? 18 minus 13 gives 5, so I'm just going to erase Okay, 18 minus 13 is 5, and, well, I think we can just follow. 18 minus 13 is 5, and 5 times negative 749.5 is 30, let's see, 3750, so 3750, so negative 3747.5, I believe, okay, S. Minus 1,070. My mind gets old as I get old. Okay, as I'm getting older, guys, I can't calculate like I used to. I'm going to double check that, make sure that's right. Okay, so we have 749.5 times 5. 3, 7, 4, 7. Yeah, that's right. Okay. No mistakes. Okay, so we have negative 3,747.5. And notice, <clears throat> we have to get S by itself. We have to solve for S. So we have to move the negative 1,078 to the other side. Okay, negative 1,078 will become what? Hopefully you see plus 1,078. And our final answer is S equals, uh, let's see, 27, 26. So negative 26, 48. Subtract 1078.0. All right, so we get negative 2669.5. Negative 2669.5. I'm going to say 1, 7 minus 8 is 9. 13 minus 7 is 6. And then we get, okay, so negative 2669.5. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that in 2008, there were negative 2,669.5 what? Negative 2,669.5 stores. Hmm. Question. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Hmm. We had 4,076 stores. Then we have 1,078 stores. Is it possible to have a negative number of stores? No. Okay. Okay. The least number of stores you can have is what? Nothing. Zero. So this does not even make sense. Okay, so this makes no sense. 
All right, we'll get to that in a moment. We're going to explain our answers. All right, next, we have to predict for what year? We have to predict for 2010, okay? 2003 was 13, okay? So what is 2010 going to be? 2010 will be, will be 20, okay? So we're going to predict for year 2010, which is 20. Let's do this again. Ugh. And again, what is 20 representing? 20 represents a T value, okay? So we're going to put 20 in for what? 20 in for T. So we have S minus 1,078 is equal to negative 749.5 times 20 minus 13, okay? And now we have S minus 1,078 is equal to, uh, this is 7, 9, So 52, so negative 52, 46.5, I believe. Let me double check. Okay, so, yeah, I apologize, guys. I don't do this in my head as well as I used to. Times 7, 52, 46.5, that's correct. All right, so now, so 20 minus 13 is 7. Okay, 7 times negative 749.5 gives negative 5,246.5, and then what do we do? We take the, to get S by itself, we take the negative 1,078 and add 1,078 to the other side, cross it out, S equals, <coughs> um, okay, so we have negative 4,000, 100, and 60, 8.5, I believe, negative 4,168.5, that's right, 5246.5, subtract, 41, yeah, that's right, 4168.5, that's right, okay, so we get negative 4168.5, alright, so at year 2010, we're predicting negative 4168.5, stores. Okay, so again, does this make sense? No. We cannot have a negative number of stores. It does not make sense. Okay, so it says, notice, are your answers reasonable? Hopefully you say no. The answers are not reasonable. My directions are graph it, t-table, okay, find your slope is step three, and step four is write the equation. Step five is to do what? Step five is to make the predictions. Okay, predictions. And if you have to, go ahead and explain. Okay, so the predictions, they predicted that there were less, there were negative 2,669.5 stores in 2008 and negative 4,168.5 stores in 2010. So what are we saying? Basically this. These don't make sense, guys. So what's going to happen? Okay, there are not going to be any stores. Based on our prediction, there, will be, there won't be any stores left. There won't be any stores left in 2008 or 2010. Now my question is, when will we have zero stores? If we continue in this trend, when will the number of stores reach zero? When will the number of stores reach zero? Here, if we extend outward, notice here we have 4,000. Here we have 1,000. Okay, so 4,000, 1,000. When will the stores reach zero? The stores will reach zero when we are located where? When we are located on the t-axis. So if we extend this line out. When is this? Okay, so the line is intersecting the t-axis here. So we're predicting when the number of stores reach zero. So the question is, let's erase here. When would the number of stores reach, when would the number of stores reach zero? Okay, that would be where the line, or when our model, when does our model cross what? The x-axis, in this case, the t-axis. Okay, so notice, we're asking, what do we know about this location? If we're trying to find this location, where it crosses the t-axis, what do we know? What do we know about this location? This location is what? This location is an x-intercept. Okay, this is the main focus of this class. This location would be an x-intercept. And what do we know about x-intercepts? We know that their y values are what? Zero. Notice, okay, x is t, y is s. So we're saying the y value is zero. What are we saying? We're saying when what? Here, t, s. We're saying that when s is zero or when the number of stores reach Zero. Okay, so when S is zero or when the number of stores reach zero, what do we still need to know? We still need to know the time. When does this occur? Okay, so in our t-table, we're interested in finding when the number of stores reach what? When the number of stores reach 
zero. Okay, so now this is not required for your homework. Okay, your homework is to number one, graph, number two, t table, number three, find the slope, number four, write the equation, number five, make your predictions. But I'm adding this in as explanation because on the next, when we extend this lesson a little further, we're going to talk about finding this as a step. Okay, so when does the number of stores reach zero? We know that the stores are zero. What do we not know? We don't know when this occurs. So going back to our equation, our model. Okay, our model has an equation. Using this equation, we can predict when the number of stores will reach zero. Okay, so which of the two values do we know? Do we know S or do we know T? Hopefully you can look here and say, well, we know S is zero, but we don't know T. So what are we going to put into the equation? Okay, we're going to put in zero for what? Zero for S. So we're going to have zero minus 1,078 is equal to negative 749.5 times quantity T minus 13. And we're going to solve for the time, the year, okay? Zero minus 1,078 is negative 1,078.